Hello everyone, welcome to my The Young and the Restless Homies official channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. At Jabat, Jack informed Diane and Billy that the financial team was attempting to assign a name to the account where the money had been transferred. Jack stated that he had frozen all of their accounts and contacted all of their merchants. Billy urged Jack to halt the search after Diane went for a meeting. He stated that his name would be tied to that account, just as it had been done earlier when someone wanted Jack to believe he had embezzled money from their family's firm. Billy identified Tucker with the help of Phyllis. Billy informed Jack that Phyllis was in severe need of money. Jack expressed his confusion as to why they were exclusively targeting Billy. Billy claimed that he was certain Tucker was betting that Jack would believe that history would repeat itself and that Billy would do the same stupid move again. Billy claimed it would not end with him because Tucker blamed his entire family for his life exploding. Billy inquired about Jack's encounter with Adam. Adam, according to Jack, had sent him the mother load. Tucker and Audra had been involved in a cover-up at McCall, according to Jack. He claimed it involves a singer and some minors. Tucker and Audra, according to Jack, covered up the cover-up in order to preserve the company's integrity. Jack gloated about having something to hit Tucker with. Billy informed Jack that he intended to inform Tucker that they had the upper hand. Jack agreed and requested that Billy return the money. Billy inquired whether Jack believed he would genuinely steal money from the family business. He questioned if Jack thought Tucker and Phyllis were responsible or if he ever wondered if it was him. Jack said Billy he never thought Billy would do something like that, and he wouldn't put it past Tucker or Phyllis. Phyllis, according to Jack, had other options. If she had been truthful or demonstrated that she could be trusted, a lot of people, including himself, would have assisted her. Billy mentioned that some people preferred to remain on the dark side, and Tucker took advantage of this by convincing someone that his method was the only way out. Tucker, according to Jack, needed to be stopped right away. Tucker noticed Audra stroll in at Crimson Lights and remembered a recent interaction with her. Tucker informed Audra that he was just interested in serving as an advisor to Jabut. He stated that the takeover was simply taking it away from Jack. He claimed he intended to punish the Abbots for destroying any chance he had with Ashley. Audra inquired whether Tucker was aware that the Abbots were aware of his intentions. Tucker stated that the Abbots had practically informed him that they knew, but he was unconcerned because he had a secret weapon, Billy Abbott. Tucker inquired on the terrace about what Audra and Nikki had discussed. Audra stated that Nikki had advised her to avoid him. He inquired as to whether Nikki had threatened to dismiss her. Nikki hadn't said anything, according to Audra. Tucker stated that it was implied. Audra stated that she had made it plain that she did not want Nikki to tell her how to live her life. Nikki had offered to be Audra's mentor, according to Audra. Tucker warned Audra to stay away from Mickey's guidance. He stated Audra wouldn't have to worry about Nikki if she continued to change trains and join him on the Jabot Express. Only Tucker could believe he could take Jabot away from the Abbots and make it appear simple. Tucker claimed it was a foregone conclusion. Tucker informed Audra that he had made plans to arouse suspicions that Billy had been stealing from Jabot. Audra predicted that Jack and Billy would immediately suspect Tucker. Tucker stated that this was exactly what he intended them to believe. He claimed he was laying the groundwork for Billy to be involved in some financial misconduct. It was only a distraction from what he was really up to. He explained that the strategy was for the Abbots to believe he was plotting his attack in one place while actually making advances elsewhere, something they wouldn't expect. Tucker explained why it was so important to him to Audra. He said that the Abbots had persuaded Ashley to end their relationship. He claimed to have sold everything he owned in order to be with Ashley. He claimed that the Abbots had cost him McCall and that it was only appropriate that he took what was dear to them. Audra described it as vindictive. Tucker stated that he had misplaced something essential and precious to him, and now it was the Abbots' time. Audra explained to Tucker that all of the vengeance was motivated by sorrow and denial. She wondered what he would do if Ashley returned, and she begged him to forgive her since she'd been wrong and done a terrible thing to him, but their plans were still on track, and she loved him. Audra had no doubt he'd fly away with Ashley without a second thought. 
Tucker corrected Audra, saying that even if Ashley gave him a sign, he would still go after Jabbat since he could no longer trust or believe Ashley. He claimed that such betrayal could not be undone. He claimed Ashley had shown her true self to him, and that everything had been a ruse to entice him back in. Ashley, he claimed, had put a dagger in his heart when his defenses were down. Audra stated that she believed Tucker was mistaken because she knew what true and deep love looked like, and Ashley had it for Tucker. Audra stated that Ashley loved him, but it had been difficult for her to separate from her family. Audra stated that she believed Tucker still loved Ashley enough to give her another chance and end his assault on the Abbots. Tucker stated that nothing would stop him from demolishing the Abbots and stealing whatever they valued. Fanny told Phyllis in the jazz lounge that he needed to check in on Daniel since he had some business in town. Danny remarked that seeing Phyllis in person was unusual because the last time he was in that room, he'd witnessed her death. Phyllis said Jeremy Stark threatened her and her family to force her to do his bidding. Phyllis informed Danny that the judge had shown her kindness by not sending her to prison. She went on to say that she was also known as the local outcast. Danny said it sounded like she thought she was the victim. Danny, according to Phyllis, was upset. Danny expressed his outrage, although he recognized there had been extenuating circumstances. He went on to say that what she'd done was heinous. What made it worse, he continued, was that she'd done it to individuals who had believed in and cared about her. He advised Phyllis to quit whining and take responsibility for making a difference. Phyllis informed Danny that she had accepted responsibility and had requested forgiveness from everyone. She begged Danny's forgiveness. She claimed she was attempting to make apologies. Danny inquired as to why she cared if he forgave her. He claimed they had a son together and had shared a life together years before. Phyllis claimed she was interested in what Danny thought of her. She questioned whether she deserved a second opportunity. When Daniel arrived, Phyllis informed him that she and Danny had met. Danny stated that they had discussed Phyllis becoming a changed person who wanted to make apologies for her actions. Phyllis, according to Danny, had a lot to prove. Daniel inquired whether Phyllis had considered his job offer. Phyllis stated that she was still considering it. That reminded Danny of the time Daniel offered her a job at Omega Sphere. Daniel, according to Phyllis, had offered her a great position worthy of her skills and talent. She stated that she had no idea what she would be doing and that she would be scrutinized. Daniel stated that this did not make the job any less legitimate or the remuneration any less genuine. Danny stated that Phyllis stated that she wanted a second chance and that this may be her time to show everyone how she'd changed. Daniel explained that while Phyllis was used to high-profile projects, he didn't trust her with anything that could jeopardize his firm. Phyllis inquired whether he believed she would deliberately harm his business. Daniel stated that it was not done purposefully or maliciously, but Phyllis couldn't help but take a shortcut when she saw one. Danny informed Phyllis that Daniel was taking her words at face value since he'd been burnt far too many times and couldn't afford any of Phyllis' shortcuts. Phyllis stated that she was still suffering with the consequences of what Jeremy Stark had done to her. Phyllis stated that she had discovered the account where Jeremy had concealed her money and had been able to repay the insurance company. Daniel mentioned how fast that felt. Phyllis informed Daniel that Michael had sent investigators to the case, and they had been able to locate one of Jeremy's offshore accounts, so she was free and clear. Danny said there were no more excuses, and it was time for Phyllis to follow through on her promise. Phyllis stated she was on the right track because she recognized how much she stood to lose if she made another mistake. Phyllis informed Daniel that if Sharon and Nick would not offer her a job, she would accept any position Daniel had to offer. Phyllis admitted that Danny didn't believe a word she said. When Phyllis looked up, she noticed Jack staring at her. Jack requested a private conversation with Phyllis. Daniel and Danny walked away. Jack informed Phyllis that he was aware Tucker had persuaded her to hack into Jabot's finance system. Phyllis stated she had no idea what Jack was on about. Jack claimed she was involved in money laundering to make Billy appear bad, and he wanted to know why she decided to go after them. Jack inquired as to whether Tucker had offered her money to cover her legal or insurance costs. He stated that he knew she'd done it, and that's so much for turning your life around. Jack asked Phyllis how long it had taken her to abandon all of her good intentions and hitch her wagon to Tucker's. Phyllis argued that she did not have to listen to this, but Jack urged that she do so, 
and give him some answers. Phyllis stated that she didn't have to listen to Jack because he had no concept what it was like to walk around town and encounter patronizing looks. She complained about being Geno City's punching bag. She instructed Jack and the others to go straight to hell. Phyllis questioned Jack if she enjoyed what she'd done to Summer or the anguish she was going through as a result of what she and Diane had done. Diane, according to Phyllis, had a hand in it. Diane took a seat to the side listening. It didn't explain what she was up to with Tucker, according to Jack. Phyllis stated that she was not going to do anything. She maintained that she was not attempting to sabotage Jack or Billy, and that she loathed Tucker. If Phyllis refused to tell him the truth, Jack asked her to assist him in determining Tucker's bottom line. He requested that Phyllis break into Tucker's system so that Jack would believe Phyllis wished to make atonement. Daniel told Danny upstairs in the dining room that work was doing well, his relationship with Lily was going well, and he was having fun. Daniel said that his sole disagreement was with Phyllis, and he desperately wanted to believe her. Danny stated that he did as well, but it was a leap of faith with Phyllis. Danny informed Daniel that he would be staying in town for a while because he had a few months free from his tour and hoped to visit Christine. Christine, according to Daniel, was in Lisbon with Paul, attempting to work things out. Danny was let down. Billy was drinking at the athletic club. He recalled a few recent discussions. Jack warned Billy not to get sucked in if Ashley and Tucker offered him a position of authority, knowing how enticing that could be. Billy stated that if Jack did not trust him, it would be easy to get irritated with him. Billy kept recalling interactions. Tucker admitted to Billy that he could see right through him. He claimed Billy had been captivated by the prospect of running Jabot on his own and couldn't get the thought out of his brain. Billy, he said, was afraid he'd blown his chance. Tucker reported that because Jack was so in love, Billy thought he was better equipped to operate Jabot, with complete control and autonomy. Billy indicated that he would do whatever it necessary to restore balance. Billy, according to Tucker, would have to figure out how to dethrone Diane on his own. In another of his memories, Billy told Diane that they both knew she wouldn't be satisfied with her current position. He stated that she would want more input and power, and that Jack would give her whatever she desired. Billy said that he was the only one who would defend his family's business. Billy remembered Jack not trusting him because Jack didn't think he could handle himself without Jack's direction. Jack remarked that he couldn't criticize Billy since everything he said was so personal to him. Billy claimed that it was always personal and rarely complimentary. In the same memory, Billy stated that Jack would never consider him a true partner. Jack stated he'd given Billy every chance. Billy claimed that it was always Jack who gave him the opportunity, Jack who was in command, Jack saying yes, no, continue, and Jack who was always holding one finger on the kill switch. He claimed that Jack was constantly expecting him to fail. Diane interrupted Billy's reminiscences by asking if Billy and Jack had devised a strategy to cope with Tucker. Billy assured her that Jack will fill her in. Diane stated that Billy still did not trust her. Billy said that he'd given Diane the benefit of the doubt and asked what else she needed him to accomplish. According to Diane, Billy was enticed by Tucker's offer to take over Jabot if the coup was successful. Billy explained to Diane that the aim was to make Tucker feel Billy was tired of being an afterthought in his family and that he wanted to switch sides. Billy claimed he'd revealed to Diane and Jack that he'd had the inclination to run Jabot for a brief second. Diane inquired as to how long. Billy claimed he had stopped it as soon as he knew what was going on. He inquired as to why Diane had inquired. Diane stated that she was concerned that she would get too much authority at Jabot and that Jack was so in love with her that he would give her anything she desired. Billy stated that he was content with the way things were. Diane told Billy that wasn't a glowing recommendation. Diane challenged Billy to declare that he considered himself as the most rational and deserving of the top rank. Billy stated that he had no intention of taking over Jack's position, just as he hoped Diane had no intention of taking over his. Billy stated that they had to cope with even more serious dangers. Tucker entered his suite. Billy knocked on the door seconds later. Billy stated that he knew what Tucker was up to and that Tucker should back off. Billy accused Tucker of trying to frame him and make it appear like he was stealing from his family's business. Billy brought up Tucker and Audra's time running the McCall record label when there was an artist who had a fascination for underage females. Tucker believed he'd buried all those emails between him and Audra, 
discussing how he was going to cover it up to save his a dollar dollar. Billy stated that he had those emails, and that if Tucker did not back down, he would smash him. So what do you guys think about this update? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like my videos, please press like and subscribe for more. I'll see you guys next time.